Attack on Titan, Season 2, Episode 2, I'm Home. Armin continues to serve his purpose as the most intelligent of the three main characters. He makes an interesting point about how there are no crevices between the rocks that make up the wall, and then puts forth the hypothesis that maybe the walls are made out of hardened titan skin. Again, this just creates more questions. It's moments like this where I hate the fact that there are only 12 episodes because those who only watch the anime will have to wait a long time to have some of their questions answered. We see Hanji researching a piece of the crystal that has surrounded Ani. She makes an uneasy face which might hint that she's figured out the nature of the wall. Eremika moment, yes. Oh, the irony. Pastor Nick is the first among the wall cult to leave the safety within the walls and see titans in the outside world. Now we are left to anticipate how he reacts to them. Hanji puts it perfectly when she says, will his beliefs be strong enough for him to stay silent or will seeing it with his own eyes make him question himself? Most of us predict that he will not be able to maintain any composure when faced with a titan, but we have to wait and see. We hate Pastor Nick because he is withholding information that can help humanity. But then Hanji puts forth the idea that he might be hiding it because he knows something more important than the fate of humanity. Again, more questions and we yearn for answers. We finally get the flashback of Sasha. It takes place after the fall of Wall Maria where hunting game is dwindling. The man is trying to teach Sasha why they should be helping those in need, but Sasha wants no part of it. She is indifferent and uncaring for those who have fled from Wall Maria. Sasha refuses to change her lifestyle and has a very selfish attitude. Then the man says some powerful words to Sasha where she shouldn't expect any help when she is in need of it. If you're not there for them, don't expect them to be there for you. His values are all about karma and the law of attraction. He believes that humans should work together and not be separated because of their ways of life. He is willing to give up his way of life in order to live in security with his family, but Sasha is not. Sasha is unable to refute the man's claims. What an odd scene. In the beginning there is no background music, just the sound of the titan eating the woman. It was just so odd to watch because there was no screaming, no music and the child just sat there in horror, in shock. I was expecting the woman to tell her child to run or say something, but nothing was said. The music starts once Sasha arrives inside the house with an axe. It may seem inappropriate, but I laughed at this scene. Every time Sasha is surprised, in shock, or in fear, it always seems funny to me. Maybe it's because of her voice or because I've been conditioned to associate her with comedic relief. Sasha tries her best to be positive around the girl, but she is completely numb. In fact, the more Sasha tries to calm the girl down, the more worried and flustered she makes herself feel. The horse was able to anticipate the incoming danger, obviously being the titan leaving the house, and it runs away, leaving Sasha and the girl without a getaway. The girl questions why Sasha is so nice when she talks, even though the situation is bleak. We find out that everybody has left the village and they left the girl's mother behind because she had bad legs. This really goes against the speech the man gave to Sasha during the flashback. No one helped the woman and her child. They were all selfish. We get another flashback of when Sasha joined the cadets, and Ymir teases her about how polite she speaks. This all helps in Sasha's character development. Ymir puts forth the idea that Sasha is just pretending to be something that she is not, but that's actually how she is. Sasha questions why out of all times the memory comes into her head at this point. She now has a smile on her face and is more hopeful. She tells the girl to keep running and her will causes the girl to showcase a facial expression. Sasha shoots one arrow in the neck of the titan which might have been out of mere habit from hunting. The next one she misses and now she only has two arrows to shoot at the titan's eyes. Notice how the flashback foreshadows this. Ymir calls her bullseye and now Sasha has to make two perfect shots on the titan's eyes. Two bullseye shots. She gets one eye and starts to worry about the consequences if she is to miss the other. Instead of using the bow, she takes a huge gamble by taking the arrow in her hand and stabbing the titan's eye. The titan gets her in a bear hug, but she is able to slip out thanks to the blood. A group of people on horseback pass by. The man from her flashback and the girl are among them. The girl is now out of shock and weeps for her mother. Notice how in her flashback, the man says that they could make money by raising and selling horses. But in this time of great need, he has been giving horses to everyone in the area for free. He truly abides by what he was trying to teach Sasha. It's finally confirmed that the man is Sasha's father after he tells her that she has become all he hoped for. She could have easily ran away from the titan and left the girl to die, but she put her own life at risk to save her. Connie's village was not as lucky and it has been absolutely destroyed. We learn that Connie also has two younger siblings, Sunny and Martin, as he hurries to his house. He is the first to arrive at his house and there's a titan laying on top of it, but his legs are far too feeble to be able to support its weight. Now we are left to question how the titan got there. The preview tells us that Connie still believes that his family is still alive. It also tells us that Aaron and the others receive a clue that might reveal the truth. Another amazing episode. The animation has been extraordinary and I can't wait to see actual fight scenes animated, especially of Aaron entering his titan form. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's only 10 more episodes, but hey, goodness comes to those who wait, right? Let me know what you guys thought of the episode and my analysis, and as always, I'll see you guys on the flip side.